This is Jalen Hart, a senior out of Houston, Texas, for the ball. You can see a lot of dribble drive attacking off the bounce by UIW. Want to get out in transition as well. Shoot a decent amount from the three-point line, but they don't have any two knockdown three-point shooters. Here's Hart into the corner. Johnson for three is off. Gets for the rebound off by Perkins. Here's Nelson. Jonathan Williams, first touch. Goes right inside and scores in the left hand. Devin Wyatt had no chance. Well, had no chance. Great spacing there, but even more importantly, great patience by Jonathan Williams on the low block. I thought Doug there before the game. He said, that's going to be the game plan early. Let's get the ball inside to Williams. We want to force the double team if we can. If not, we can go to work. 12 on the shot clock. Johnson with the ball into the corner. And Sidney Sox driving on Tilly. Created a little space, hung in the air, and dropped it in. Tied it to. Sox is going to put it on the deck and attack you. Averages over 10 free throw attempts a game. Jonathan Williams. Just keep feeding him, Dan Dicker. Hey, he's got it rolling like that. Try to get it to him on the block from a wing. That time to a high low action on pick and rolls. However, you need to get him the ball. He must get touches early in this game. Sox to Johnson. Jalen Hart working on Perkins into the paint. Not a good pass to Johnson. Nelson tipped it away. Johnson heaves it. Off the front of the rim, Tilly the rebound. 4-2 lead in the ball. The Zags have hit their first two shots. Thanks to Jonathan Williams inside. Here's Tilly for the corner three. So he has mastered that corner three, Dan. That is really his spot on the three-point line. Typically, you see him being more comfortable at the top of the key. He really searches out those corners. Does an excellent job of getting that shot off. And Kispert and Herbie get tangled up on that drive. And the foul call. And it's on Kispert. That's the first of the game. This uh, Cardinal basketball team, Dan and Richard, they're going to play aggressive. They've been aggressive with the ball to begin. They're going to let the score hard and fast. They want to push it in transition, as I mentioned earlier, but then if they don't get anything good, they're going to space the floor, pick it up at all different angles, and really try to get in the paint. Six on the shot clock. Sox going to work against Perkins. In and out, Williams the rebound. It's a nice look, though. You move the ball, you get the mismatch inside, force Perkins. Uh, to the low block, just take it to bucket. And Nelson left off at the top. Silas had a good tournament in Florida. Yeah, he struggled offensively, only 4 of 19 for the three-point line, but you saw what he could do defensively. He handled the ball for stretches at the point guard position, and Sox misses a long three. Uh, but really, his defensive effort uh, is remarkable. He's really become one of the premier defenders on the perimeter in the country. Nelson, Rob, the Jonathan. Jim Curry up and under and scored. And I tell you what, he is becoming more and more comfortable with that right hand. He was so left hand dominant last year. And you really saw it against Portland. Went to that right hand three or four times on the low block. Right there. He uses the rim, gets it off with the right hand. Tipped out. Here's Kenny. That's a three. And the rim down Williams, another rebound. I'm trying to think if Gonzaga's had a better offensive option with his back to the basket than Jonathan Williams. Maybe since Batista. Uh, I mean, there's been quite a few that well, come to Kelly, but then it comes to mind. He wasn't purely basketball. 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 What Kelly would show up with is Jonathan will also play off the elbow and attack you off the bounce as well. But I do agree, he started off the season incredibly well, posting it and finishing. Uh, and that pass from Williams as well. But both Kelly and Williams have been their game. Get the rebound. Loose ball. And start to initiate that fast break. You saw Tilly earlier in the half. And they're right there. Not only does Williams brings it up, but delivers a nice pass over the top for the easy two points for Josh Perkins. Nice start for GU. Up 12. We'll be out here after the break. Trivia. Question Who led the sacks in scoring during the DKA Invitational? Was it Jonathan, Josh, Rui, or Silas? Text your answer to 2729. You know, the you Yeah, okay. I think I, I think I the, was the tutor. That answer has already flown out over the airways, never to be heard again. <laughs> Until we give you the answer in the audience. Pretty question an answer. And uh, it's going to be done back the ball. And it's number 12, obviously, any step on that end line. But you guys, obviously, there were better stretch for scores. Wiltshire comes to mind, Olenek comes to mind, but a pure back-to-the-basket scorer? I don't know. Well, he's extremely versatile. I agree with that. 
I don't. I think he's got good, not great forward. I look at him more as a step out forward. He can use his quickness and his vanish on the perimeter against other forwards. And the fact that he's left-handed as well is it is difficult to guard. I mean, most lefties have that intrinsic advantage. I kind of feel the guy great punch. There's the bucket inside. Mr. Rui Hachimura is in the game. Yeah, he's picking up right where he left off against Texas the other night. Yeah, and career high, he's only stretching it out. Speaking of a guy starting to put it all together, it still has a long way to go uh, before he even scratches what he could do on the floor. Williams comes in for the rebound. Really, really, his coming out party on the national level against Texas was tremendous. And they really needed him to step up with foul trouble, uh, given the matchup. His versatility was on full display. I think the reason you saw him a little bit more extended minutes is defensively, he's picking up rotations a little bit quicker than he was early in this season, and for sure last year. Zach Norbell on the floor for two as well. Nelson! Has it taken away and he's tied up with the Gonzaga basketball. But a good defense by Augustine Ennius. Silas had got in deep with two on the shot clock. Zach Morville guys, the guy that came out of Chicago, highly touted, Richard year a year ago. Slow start, but the offense is coming, right? Yeah, I mean you could say it's a slow start, but still if you look at the numbers, he's still averaging seven points a game. You know, Portland he struggled. As Josh it's the difficult three and getting the shot clock there on the inbound play, but He's learning a new role. In high school at Simeon, he was able to kind of get whatever shot he wanted. Now, you know, he comes in off the bench, he's got to guard, he's got to make plays for others, but you don't want to take away his strength, and that's just what I was for. Yeah, he's a better defensively. It's perfect. He sticks the ball out of bounds. You know, if you take a look at this, is, you know you've got it going. But when you knock down this type of shot, I mean, that is as heavily contested as it comes. But it's still Josh finds a way to knock down. Back to the back off, too. He's a better defensively than I thought they than I expected, but more importantly, he's only 6-21 from the three-point line, but he's creating some offense for his teammates, 14 assists for 7 turnovers, so he's a bit more versatile than I think the staff thought he'd be this early. Johnson put it on the floor, and there's a shot clock violation. Jakob Larson on the floor for two, he's going to clog up the middle. The Sags have hit eight of their first nine shots, lead at 19-2. to Well, oh, they've been very good offensively, but I think defensively they've really stood out, because this is a difficult game. You play against great competition, now you come home, you probably never heard of UIW, and they're really giving it a great effort on the defense end. That's a I can't handle that pass. Turnover number one for G. Well, I think it's the, the defensive end of the floor that's going to define the type of season this G addition is going to have. I think this group could be very special on that end of the floor. They're different than they were last year with Collins and Kronowski, more of a traditional, uh, rip, more traditional rip protection as the ball goes out of bounds and stays with UIW. But this year's group, while they don't have the size, they're much more versatile, can switch a lot more, and they still have some of that verticality, particularly on the perimeter when Rui plays the three, and the Motilli and Williams are excellent shot blockers in their own right. Yeah, the base just flat far differently than Shimmick and Zach Collins did a year ago. Those are two really good defensive bigs in different ways. Tilly and Perkins can get out, excuse me, Tilly and Williams can get out and switch pick and rolls, they can guard different actions than the other two bigs from last year. And so you're right, gives them more versatility. I think the challenge for Gonzaga will be if and when they come up against the dominant low block score, a guy with some good size, you can uh, force you to double team because you don't have that size inside and outside of Larson to kind of go at a guy one on one. Perkins to Larson, can't finish, got it back. Missing, got it back again, loose, full and grand down the air by Simi Sox. There's Hart in transition right at Perkins. A lot of contact. A lot of contact. But look at the quickness there by Hart. Getting in the teeth of the defense. Norvell back to Perkins. There's Hatchie Burris spin on the baseline. Norvell from the corner is good. Here we go. Get your rhythm shots. Find open space. Really with a great find there. Baseline drive. As an opposite weak side guy. Find that baseline drift. That time gets a shoot knock down three. Sam Burmeister, number 15 on the floor. For the Cardinals. Larson almost had him pinned on the baseline. Burmeister drives it, Larson. Effective the shot, and then Jakob took it off the rim. Perkins. Foul called against UIW. You know, Josh doesn't get free throws here, but you'd like to see that. He needs to, he needs to find that balance. I keep talking about that. He's such a tremendous three-point shooter, but he just doesn't get to the line. And, you know, if he can't get to the line, he still needs to start creating some foul pressure. Uh, you'd like to see him try to even out his game a bit with some dribble penetration from time to time. That was a nice take. That's your bar. Going for the jam, and it falls anyway. Great pocket pass there by Silas Nelson, but a, a great read on the roll and catch to a finish by Rui. So, set a good screen. They're going to get open. Excellent pass, and you see the explosive finish. Looks like he lost it on the way down the big play. 
Now that's a play Rui just came that's a simple basketball play that Rui struggled with last year. That's the growth that you're seeing from him as a young player as he knocks down a free throw. The Tigers hit 10 of the first 13 shots, 4 of 5 from behind three. It's an offensive juggernaut. <laughs> Hart drives right at Nelson, almost took it away, but Hart's strong enough at 5'11 and 160 yeah. to score anyway. Tell you what, Hart's a good player. New cover of the year last year in the Southland Conference where he averaged about 17 a game. He's struggled so far this year, but tonight's showing you what he can do. Pittsburgh short from the corner. Oh, Hart again. Johnson, this is a deep three. Sean Johnson left wide open at the top, and he buries it. Good job picking up the ball in transition defense, but not a good job matching up. To the trailer. Actually, he's shot for the free throw. Really starting to become comfortable. Finding that middle of the zone catch. Early in the season, he would quickly look up and say, that time, do what you have to do when you catch it with the high post against the zone and be a threat. Look at the basket. You're open. Let it fly. There's Devin Wyatt now hard. Oh, Silas Nelson took a shot from Wyatt, got the ball, went to the rim, and a foul is called. But Silas Nelson took one right to the chin on this screen. Will we see it? No, this is the Johnson 3. 11 5 to play first half. Zags up big. Hachimura. Oh, oh, Rui. Can answer. Who led the Zags in scoring during the PK invitation? It was, of course, Jonathan Williams. The answer was Zags. Well, he averaged 23.3 points a game at a 64% from the Crazy. It was. It might be the best game that I've ever been to as a fan to watch the game. I you was were lucky enough to go on Friday night, and it, the atmosphere was awesome. There were so many Zag fans there. Outcome wasn't quite what people wanted, but I think it's going to do wonders for this team as they move along in the season. Thirteen on the shot clock. Kispert with it. There's Silas Nelson. I don't know if we got a shot of him. There's Morgan lines up the three and missed it. But the shot that Nelson just took to the chin here before the break is like a good left hook from Mike Tyson. Yeah. I suspect he might have had a conversation with Jakob Larson about calling out screens. <laughs> took a good shot, no doubt. Uh, Silas is tough and there's a travel. And it'll be Zach Basketball leading 27 to 10. Four turnovers now for UIW. So the graphic right there shows one for Gonzaga. That was an emphasis leading into this game. UIW forces over 20 a game. They want to get up, climb up into you, pressure the ball, whether it's in zone or man. You've got to be strong with the ball, make good, quick, strong decisions. Gonzaga's done that so far tonight. Killian Tilly back on the floor. Jeremy Jones, our first look at him in this game on the floor as well. His drives, and the reverse is good. He's long enough to do that. He's got good size for... A freshman wing, showing a little bit more versatility than I quite frankly thought coming into the season. A little bit better ability to put the ball in the deck and finish around the rim. And you know what's been impressive about Corey? In 180 minutes coming into tonight, only four turnovers. I mean, he just plays. He plays like an upperclassman. If you take a look, you know, he gets the pass in the corner, doesn't try to force it for three, and you see not only the athleticism, but the strength to finish with a little contact. He's just a very mature player at a young age. discussion about the group that's today. Look at the mic up or uh, Williams a great rebound. Well, I just made a comment before the game that Richard is a father now, a father of twins, and this kid lines up to three and buries it. And we're starting to see how the fatherly Richard Fox emerge with terms like a more mature team. I could totally see him telling the skills there. Already in 18 months. Yes. Yeah. That can't start early enough. Socks with the roll, and it's 32 to 12. Tilly at the elbow, has to take it away. Jalen Hart has come to Spokane to play. Perkins went up in the air to contest him. The foul is called, and the senior out of Houston, Texas, will go to the free throw line for the Cardinals. It's a nice response from Hart. Here he goes right at Perkins. They're so rather trying to avoid the block shot. It's exactly what you want to do, Tilly. That's his other size, but he looks like a bounce back. He struggled in the last game against Houston. Only 15 minutes, did not score, had five turnovers. It's a nice response from your senior point guard. Yeah, let me ask you this. I think the one thing that I heard in the offseason most from Zag fans was concern about Josh Perkins being the leader of this team and able to close out games and could he make the right play at the right moment. I think he's starting to dispel those beliefs, isn't he? I would agree with that. And I think the reason why is, as a freshman, 
he had some ups and downs. Last year, he was willing to take a back seat and allow Nigel Williams Goss to kind of be the guy with the primary ball handling duties. He had some games last year where he struggled with turnovers, in particular the national championship game to start the second half, but he has been rock solid for the most part this year. And as a bonus star on Q, knocks down the three from straight away. Wait, give me another point guard who's shooting better right now. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't name one for you. Well, but it's interesting you say that because it's been Coach Few has worked on him all this season. To get him to quit driving the ball so much, you're a world-class shooter, shoot it. Well, it becomes, what is your strength? Josh Perkins' strength is when your feet are set, let it fly from beyond the arc. He's gotten that message, he's starting to understand that message, and it's paying off. Kispert missing the three, a foul called inside on Jonathan Williams, and frankly, Richard, a lot of those turnovers we've seen in the past by Josh were him driving through the lane, either out of control or without plan. I, I think it's the latter. You know, not necessarily having a plan or having, you know, premeditated intent as he's making a play rather than just letting the play develop in front of him. He's got such great uh, ability, uh, as you see. He up the defensive rebound, but you know, for him, I think it's just consistency. You know, have incredible stretches where he's controlling the game, controlling, you know, not turning it over, and then all of a sudden it's a three or four minute stretch. And stretch and Jones gets called for the charge, or he turns it over. Offensive foul called on Gonzaga. Josh Perkins already with eight points. He's two of two from behind the arc. Zags up big. The time for tonight's smiles of the game brought to you by Delta Dental. A healthy smile is a powerful thing. Find the easiest way to take care of yours at Delta Dental, WA.com with easy online tips to keep your smile strong all season long. Delta Dental of Washington, proud supporters of healthy smiles in your Gonzaga Bulldogs. Yeah, there we go. Everybody's happy in Zagville. Dana Richard even smile off this game. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I just want to say that you really call him a true game, given the uh, score. Burmeister for three for the Cardinals. That's scouting report defense. You know when he's come, comes into the game, he's looking to find that three-point line in any opportunity. Five tanks have been a three in this game. And Burmeister almost had a steal. Until he into the corner. Williams will shoot the three. That short, Killian back back. Kispert, make the three, drive the rim. And free throws coming. Are you surprised at how good a shooting team this has been? Not at all. Not at all. Because we, we've talked about Josh a minute ago about his ability to shoot the ball. Kispert had that reputation. He might have been the best high school shooter that I've seen coming into the season. And of course we talk about that. They miss a free throw. Uh, but then you talk about Norvell. And, and Melson, his numbers don't dictate it, but he is a good shooter as well. And then you've got the bigs on the perimeter like Tilly. You can stretch it out and shoot, but I mean, we take a look at the concourse level camera down, and there are a lot of open seats, unfortunately, from those students. It's pretty shocking to see, considering you've got the 15th ranked team in the country, and the students aren't showing up and showing out for this Gonzaga Bulldog basketball team. Burmeister, there's City Socks. Hachimura rips it down and starts the break. I just don't know what, what are they doing in college? On a night like this, if you got a world-class basketball program and you're not at the game, so all those that are here, I mean, they get it, but somebody does. So, you know, some, you know, some of them were probably in the library studying. Thank you. Is that where you were, Richard? <laughs> I wasn't at the gym, man. I'll tell you what, yeah. 100% academics all the time. We were re uh, roommates my senior year, and yes, Richard was into the books, that's for sure. Well, he's mature. <laughs> that's right. Beyond his years. He looks 80. He's really like 60. There's that you heard. As many questions as this ball club had coming into the year, and so many guys who really hadn't played, the ball just moves around so quickly. Guys are unselfish. The ball just doesn't stick anywhere. And Socks rises up and hits the mid-range jump shot. Now let me ask you this. Had Nigel come back to this team this year, is this a better Zag team with them, or would it have too much of the offense had to go through? Uh, that's a difficult question to answer as Duncan Lentz throws the turnover away, but... Corey Kispert steps in front, takes the charge on Simi Sox, but, you know, I, I think it would be a much different looking basketball team, and the reason, I don't think it would be any worse or any less as we take another look at the charge taken by Kispert there, but Nigel was very ball dominant, especially down the stretch of games. Nothing wrong with it at times, breaking out of offense, going to get the ball, wanting to be that guy, to be the playmaker, the decision maker. But you can't complain about it because it worked last year. Sure. That's not time game. Silas missing. Hachimura. What a great offensive board that was. He got it back. Stays with it. And 
Now the movement again, and Pittsburgh a little long on that three attempt. It's just a great pass from Norvell. He had a good look, but passed it up. It got an even better look for Pittsburgh at the top of the key and able to knock it down. Uh, but how about the effort from Rui on the glass tonight? Bottom nine rebounds against Texas with another great effort tonight. Jalen Hart was blocked by the under part of the glass there. Patchy Murray thought the three out. Jonathan tires away and missed it. That's a 7 of 15 from behind that arc. And Johnson in transition missing a three. Socks the rebound. Left it short. And it's cleared by Jay Free. Norvell Jr. Zach showed a little frustration after that missed three, but he passed down the first one, gave it to Rui. Rui gave it back. Zach took the right shot. You've got to, as a shooter, keep taking that one. It will start to drop. Great pass. But even better interior defense inside by the Zach's mess. And with the spin, the lob, Kisper. To be twisted ankle. It was an awkward jump for Corey Kisper. 3.57 to play first half. Zach's up there. Today we're going to talk about trucks. Which of these truck brands do you There are the Sags. 19 consecutive years now in the NC2A tournament. And Jesse Wade on the floor for GU number 10. Along with Jones, Perkins, Tilly, and Larson. Wade, a freshman out of Kaysville, Utah. He replaces Corey Kisprick. I believe went right to the locker room. Yeah, it looks, it looks that way, Greg. Right? Traveling, you know, here's where uh, Kispert may have hurt himself, gentlemen. Well, this is right before the break. Nelson throws it up, and you see kind of just a power outage right there. It looks like Kispert just didn't have enough strength. In the late, but early in the first half, it looked like he took a knee to the calf or behind the knee. Uh, he tucked it out there, but it'll be interesting to see if he returns. We've got a couple big games coming up, and this, this game looks to be decided as Larson gets fouled on the post up. Yeah, the foul going against Simi Sox. And that's his second foul before the shot, so it'll be Perkins inbounding for Gonzaga with 3.27 to play here in the first half. Wade is a sharpshooter from Utah, but it's Perkins. And he mentioned Jesse Wade is a sharpshooter right now. Josh Perkins stays hot. That's unbelievable. Three for three now from long range on the evening after going 14 of 23 at the PK80 in three games. This number is in my ball. Yeah, it's crazy the way he's shooting. He's shooting like 55% on the year. He's taking plenty of game units. Not as if it's unlimited attempts. Perkins. We spent a lot of time in the offseason working on that body. As Larson in transition missed what will shoot free throws, but Josh really worked on his conditioning in the offseason. If you look, he did, his body is a lot thinner than it was a year ago. I agree. You know, and it's different. And so I know he spent he knew how important this year was coming in now to his junior year. He worked really hard in the offseason. Well, workload is different. We well, touched on this a second ago about Nigel being the primary ball handler last season. Josh knew it was gonna be on him. And so, you know, your your observation would be correct if he knows he's going to have to walk major minutes and be a ball handler throughout the most of the game. You see what he's done a year to date in the WCC League, basically <laughs> the best three-point shooter in the league. I mean, what's crazy to me is 53%, he's 28th best in the country. Yeah. Well, we're still a small sample size. He's taking 50 on yeah. the ground, though. I mean, but there's 28 better in the country, 27 better in the country. Well, we have to look at attempts, but it's not, what's remarkable about it, Dan, you know this as a guard, it's not just, he's not just a shooter, he's got to do all the primary ball handling. He really competes defensively, so it's on both ends of the floor, so to have the energy as Hart gets past Tilly uh, to get these away, to have the energy and the stamina uh, to continue to knock down these shots is impressive. And then if you leave him open, he's got the ability to finish. Perkins now with 13. Jalen Hart lifts the Cardinals with eight. Johnson inside. Can't hit it. Larson trying to clear the rebound, but he's fouled by Simi Sox. And that's Simi's third personal foul. And number seven on UIW. The arc of two points. Perfect from the line in this game. Three rebounds. You guys believe that Jakob's ahead of his development here at GU? He's been uh, making, he's, he's had an impact in this early season. Okay, time for your Alaska Air upcoming schedule. Enjoy low fares to amazing places. Alaska Airline flies, connecting Spokane to over 100 destinations, including 
Costa Rica, New York City. Book now at alaskaair.com. Of course, a game with Phil Hobart. Yeah, they got two great East teams coming up. Creighton coming here, which is hopefully the students show up for that one because that's a huge game. 25 ranked, ranked top 25 on ESPN, but Villanova is going to be great. The reason they brought up Villanova is that you can fly into New York to watch that game on Alaska. That's right. That's right. From the corner, and it rattles in by Jordan Kite out of San Antonio. But back to Larson, gentlemen, are you yeah, liking what you're seeing on the big coat? Yeah, I, I am. He, he did play a ton as he bottles the next pass. He did play a ton in the PK-80. That's, that's a whole different level. Uh, but you, you see what he can do is Mark knocks down get another tough way. I think for Jakob, it's going to be matchup dependent. Good. As he continues to get better throughout the year, we'll probably see some more consistent minutes against some of these better teams. But he clearly fits a need for GU. He's going to have his moment. Here's Wade with 15 on the shot clock. Perkins now with it. Larson tries to set the screen. More bell prize. Bounce pass. To Larson! Way to go! Good strength. Got an excellent drop down. Pass there from Norvell. That had some English, like one of Dan Dickow's wet shots from 80 yards. <laughs> I wish I could get away as close anymore. Yeah, just give it up there. There's Kite, elbow jumper. Jones with the rebound. Under 30 to play first half. They could play for one. There's less than a second here between the two blocks. And we will have an interview with uh, assistant coach Donnie Daniels coming up at halftime. Zag's really dominating in all facets of the game. Jones. Larson can't get it off. Yeah, Perkins just went a little too late on that little confusion of when he wanted Larson to set the screen. He's got to get a shot out there for GU. Yeah, I don't think they got that off in time, although it was a great attempt from Jalen Hart. 49-26, our score is ahead. We'll wait for Donnie Daniels to get into position to talk to us. And Gonzaga, 18 of 32 shooting, 8 of 17 from behind three. 24 rebounds to just 12 for the Cardinals. And Donnie's in position now. Coach, I'm wondering, besides that last... Welcome back in, College Basketball Live, sitting here with a few ACC coaches. There's one first-time head coach in this group, David Padgett. When, when some assistants, most assistants, get a head coaching job, it happens in April. You got yours in October. How would you assess the challenges of getting your team ready for the season in the preseason? I don't know if we have enough time to talk about the challenges we face, but, uh, you know, the good news about the team I inherited, uh, we have a, a very good mix of older players who play college basketball, seniors, juniors, even sophomore, DJ Kane. We have a very talented freshman class. Obviously, they're freshmen. There's a lot they need to learn and go through, and there's no easy way to get freshman experience except to let them go through it. But our older guys have been tremendous in trying to help the younger guys and get ready for the season. So just each practice, we're just trying to do better than we were the day before. You had a little more lead time when you stepped over from an assistant to replacing John Calipari there at, at Memphis. What advice would you, would you give him stepping in, although the time frame is a little bit different? Now, David's going to do a great job, and he's a basketball guy, and his dad was a really good coach as well, too, and, and so he's going to do great, and, um, you know, they're, they're good, their team's really good, and, you know, following, you know, with Coach Patino, and, and when I took over at Memphis, following Coach, uh, coach Calipari, it's just, they're hard to do because, you know, the success that you're following those, and both guys, so you just do the best you can. It was a primary head coaching job there at Memphis, you're just getting started, like, reflect on, on what, what it was, you're at the pinnacle now, they're coaching in the ACC. Reflect to your first head coaching job when you slid into that chair and had that ownership. Maybe an overwhelming feeling? What was that like? I think it was. I remember my first year at the University of Delaware in 1995. I, I wasn't very trusting of delegating. I tried to do everything and a little too much. I've learned to delegate more. But I think the biggest thing is you try to be yourself. You know, you've worked for a guy. You've been with a head coach. I think to develop your own identity and be yourself, as soon as you can get confident doing that, it's going to be helpful. Yep. What was yeah, that like? my, my first head coaching job was at a Division II school called American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts. And um, recruiting there was very, very difficult. But we spotted a young man I thought could really turn our program around. His name is Rick Carlisle. And we tried to recruit Rick Carlisle to a Division II school. <laughs> Two years later, I was the assistant at Virginia, and uh, Rick called me. He was playing at the University of Maine. And he transferred to Virginia, helped us get to the Final Four, now has been in the NBA since 1984. So when you're looking at players and trying to build a program, you got to find good players. Rick was a good player. We just couldn't get him to us. It doesn't matter where you are. You might be someplace soon that you can actually get him. Buzz, your first head coach. Yeah, what was that like? I remember it vividly. Uh, very honored, grateful. 
uh, bigger than any dream I'd ever had. Was very thankful that the University of New Orleans would hire me, and uh, have felt that way every day over the last 11 years. Brad? Yeah, I was very blessed. Uh, I took over at uh, UNC Wilmington, having been an assistant there for eight years under a very good coach in Jerry Wainwright, so the program was in, in a great situation. We had good players coming back, a good foundation. We've been to the tournament, and so really the, the ease of transition for me was, was much easier than most, and that I already knew the league, I knew the university, uh, and Coach Wainwright had given me a ton of responsibility, so it really gave me a lot of confidence. You mentioned getting to uh, the NCAA tournament, and when you're at maybe a, a lower level or a mid-major school, it's getting to the tournament's a great accomplishment. When you're in the ACC, it's not just getting to the tournament, it's making a run. You could have a great year, maybe even win a championship in the league, but you don't get to the second weekend, and uh, it's almost forgettable in some fans' eyes. How do you guys self-assess when it comes to success relative to the NCAA tournament, whether it's getting there or advancing deep? Well, for me, I mean, I, I've tried to be better uh, just about your own personal success and what you define it as. I think when I, my time at Memphis, uh, I was just I was really unhealthy uh, mentally, uh, and, and just because I, I lived and died by every single game. And I, I, so when I came to Georgia Tech, I tried to have a better perspective on things, and, and it's a work in progress. Uh, it's hard to get to the tournament. I mean, I thought we had a good year last year. We finished eleventh place in this league. And I mean, so and we had eight wins in the league. I don't know if we'll ever get eight wins again in this league, I and mean, it's hard to do. And so, you know, if you you just do the best you can, I'm trying to be better about that and focusing on just doing the best you can. Let the chips fall where they fall. That was a player, obviously. You want to get as deep as you can. What about as a coach? How do you? He said when he started out, he didn't have a healthy perspective. You're just starting out. What's your perspective? Well, I think at Louisville, it's it's just a long established that getting to the tournament per se isn't enough. I think making a deep run has, has come to be expected over the last 15, 16 years and obviously we've had a lot of success now. I'm not going to put any pressure on myself or on my team to say, hey, we have to get to the Elite Eight, we have to get to the Final Four, because that's just not realistic. You know, everything we've been going through with me as a first-time head coach, that wouldn't be fair to anybody. So we're just trying to have as good of a season as we can have, win as many games as we can have, kind of just break up into three segments. you got non-conference, you got conference, and then whole season, so just take it one segment at a time. How does that change as you get deeper into your career? Because when we refer to you guys, how many Final Fours does he have? How many national championships? Well, that dynamic happened a little bit this year for us. We, The two previous years, we've been to the Elite Eight. We get knocked out in the second round by a very good West Virginia team, but we got, we finished in the top four of the regular season and got to the championship game of the ACC tournament. And so I was trying to tell our guys that, you know, we had a pretty good run, and, and even uh, it was even harder trying to explain that to my fans, but maybe they finally got it at the end of the day. What about, you, you made a deep run with George Mason, now here are my age. Yeah, 20 years ago, I had an incredible opportunity to talk to the great John Wooden, who won 10 national championships. And he talked about one thing that you had to have to be successful as a coach. He said you have to have balance. You have to have the understanding of what your expectations are, maybe very different than what anybody else is. And you just have to have that balance in your life, balance with your team so that you're enjoying the journey. Not so much talking about, did you make the final four? So, uh, and that's the way we've tried to approach it. We just want to be the best we can be every season we're competing. Uh, last thing was, it's validation though, right? I mean, NCAA tournament, that's a, that's a thing you can sink your teeth into. I think it just depends on what validation and who you're wanting your validation from. Uh, not trying to be holier than now. I like playing in the NCAA tournament because that means I have an extended period of time with our players each day. And so whether we win, whether we get there, I think that's for other people to judge. I think my responsibility as a leader is to help them grow to be the best people they can be. And if that means we play a couple extra games, maybe that time period helps them even more. Brad, you've had a taste of it. Very close. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in a while. It's certainly something that we want to get back to. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about you know playing in March with a chance to advance. That's kind of a phrase we use to, to, to kind of keep our momentum going, and I think it's something that you put the NCAA tournament out there, it's not as easy as some programs, it's more, it's more of a challenge, and uh, certainly you analyze each team and, and just try to get better working on that with that, that thought in mind for us. Okay. Good perspective, guys, we'll wrap it up when we return, these guys have left uh, quite a mark on their teams, what about the, the digital footprint, social media, get into that for a few minutes now. Let's start with your health. Yeah. You know, you're 70. And yeah. a lot of people want to ask, how, how much longer yeah. do you want to go? Do you want to ask that? Yeah, I'm going to ask that. I'm going to ask you. How much longer do you want to go? Yeah. I want to, uh, I didn't get my knee replaced to retire. Let's put it that way. So I'm 70 years old. I think I'm definitely younger at heart. I have the knowledge, though, of a 70-year-old who's coached for 42 years and has coached 11 years with the U.S. team. And I still I think that's a, a good combination, especially at a great school. I want to make a difference. I'm enthusiastic. Come on, Kyle, I got you. Grayson Allen, when describing you, called you a friend. Yeah. Which is interesting for a 21-year-old to call a 70-year-old a friend. Uh, how do you think you've been able to 
connect with players these days and change and, and be able to adapt? Well, I think it's up to the teacher to adapt so that his or her teachings are accepted easier by your pupils. I've had to adapt a lot. Not values, work ethic, and all that, but how you communicate, how you dress, what jokes you tell, do you stay current. Grayson Allen is a really good basketball player. He also appears to be a dirty basketball player. Well, his reputation for this precedes him. What gives you confidence that, that Grayson, if you have confidence, that Grayson has kind of gotten past the, the issues, the tripping issues? And he, and he yeah, well, you know, it, it, look, there's a, it, is it more tripping issues or what everyone made of, of a couple issues? I want Grayson to be Grayson. Grayson's, a, I think, as good a player as there is in the country. And uh, I want him to be a leader, and I want him to not have a rearview mirror. How much did you worry about him last year, though, because of all the public outcry uh, and the attention that he got? How much were you worried that he yeah. didn't handle it all? You would have thought that there was a capital offense that had occurred. That's the attention, I think, that our program brings, the scrutiny, and, you know, you have to learn to live under that microscope. But he has had an opportunity to be in incredible situations where you don't play at the beginning of your freshman year. You are the hero of the national championship game. You're an All-American as a sophomore, and you have an incident, and then that's unbelievably publicized. And then you have another situation, and then you're hurt the whole year. Holy mackerel. He's lived a lifetime in those three years, and I, I think it'll all uh, end up you know, really, really good. How good can this team be? I mean, you have talent, you've got bigs. They're very different than a lot of your previous teams. Yeah, you know, our team is going to be very much a developing team. We have three guys in Marvin Bagley, Wendell Carter, and Marquise Bolden. We're going to be pro players, maybe all three of them at the end of this year. We don't have the perimeter depth that we have, you know, like the last few years, but we have more big guys. And so we have to adjust what we do, uh, and which we do every year. Has your outlook of recruiting one of changed? People think it has. No, no. I, you know, everyone talks about us changing our recruiting philosophy. That's, that, that's not the case. You know, it's just that. Grand Hill was in the mid-90s, or early 90s. If Grand Hill was today, he'd go too. But we would have still recruited Grand Hill. You know, Leitner and Batty A, and that's when it started for us with Elton Brand, but he was even here two years. I have not changed. The landscape has changed to where it would be the best decision for them to go, and I'm okay with that. Using his quickness to get into the paint. He's also a good finisher. Back up the tags. Right back up the Cardinals. Martin again. And Nelson with the rebound. Norvell. It's, it's funny how I see a lot of young players in their careers make plays like that then, and then it seems like 12 months later they got it figured out and more Norvell would, would dunk that ball. Yeah, it looked like it was premeditated what he wanted to do. He was setting it up for a Euro step, the defense stayed in front just enough, and then he kind of stumbled and lost his balance, but you're right. Yeah, the general, and we should point out that Norvell started the second half. Kispert has not come out of the locker room with Gonzaga. We can't read a lot into that. Obviously he may have twin something. It may just be precautionary at this point for the game that's in hand. There's Tilly. Skip into the corner, Perkins into the three. Josh can't miss. If you have an open look with his feet set, you can almost just start running back to the other end of the court. Get ready to play some defense. You can press it out and shoot this basketball. And good looking bucket there for Simmons Sox. Both well, Sox and Hart have to keep it here. So obviously, it's been a tough night for UIW. Both those kids have really done well. And Williams. Is foul. And Jonathan, six points in this game. His first free throw is coming. But seven rebounds and three assists. And that's the thing that really jumps out at you with both Tilly and Williams is their versatility. 
Both of them have, as William says, the free throw. Both of them have areas in their game where they really excel, but they can both bring it up the floor, they can stretch it out, and they're both, for the most part, pretty good with the ball. They really struggled against Texas. Both of them had six turnovers. It's pretty uncommon for them. But typically, you can run the offense through them as Williams knocks down the second, and they make good decisions with the ball when they have it. Well, that Texas front court. I mean, that's a pretty good front court. Low but not a great score. Put a seven, what, eight wingspan, I think is what it is. And then Osijowski, I mean, he's an experienced player as well. And Herbert has fouled inside. That last foul, by the way, was number four on Sunny Sox. And Norvell Jr. getting the foul there. That is his second. And the first time she heard this happen. Perkins ahead to Norvell. Zach Delay. Great pass over the top. All Norvell had to do was catch and finish. Defense by the sides and take it away. Perkins up to Norvell. He's got Nelson. Silas going for the jam. He's met there by Johnson and Herbie and a foul call against UIW. This, this team, guys, is really fun when it's out of transition. Like it just it knows how to push the ball, great passing, and of course you've got finishers like Perkins. Yeah, just a, a very unselfish group. Make the right play consistently. Nelson knocks down the first three. Well, let's take a look at Jimmy John's, our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. Perkins over the top to Zach Norvell for the easy finish in transition. Or Jimmy John's sandwiches, uh, sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's were fat, fat, fast, and fresh meats. I need to work on my read there, Greg. Sorry about that. Uh, Richard, you know, it's all about getting better. <laughs> it's just time thinking about a sandwich. A year ago, it was rough. I mean, I think I've seen a lot of progress. <laughs> I just say that mature a bit. You know, thank you. It's been a great maturity. Hart and Spine right at Tilly and scored. Boy, a contact from Perkins and Tilly stared him down. And I've got to, you've got to be thrilled if you do IW with Hart's response. It's over the top. Tilly flushes the alley over from Zach Norvell. Wow. Set to hit three of their first four shots. And Perkins take it away. This is uh, getting too easy. Another lot of Williams. He has finished, but it's cleaned up. Nelson takes the charge against Christian Beagan. Great, let me do it again. All right, let's take a look at the new Jimmy John's delivery of the game. Norvell up the middle. We're up straight over the top to Killian Tilly with the tough finish. Folks, order Jimmy John's Jimmy John sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's were fresh and fast and neat. That's how you do it, Greg. We'll be back after the break. Zach's up here. Bush in 1987 down in San Antonio, Texas. For 10000 Very ruled there. On the South the hard playing team. Yeah, David Robinson got his masters there. Right? There you go. David, 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 master, yeah. David Robinson was at the PK80 and his son plays for Duke. And he had some high plays to say for Mar Marvin Bagley. So it reminded him of a young Tim Duncan. I think that was pretty good. 30 and 15 twice. Defense takes it away. Perkins left it for Nelson. Oh, you just see it, Greg, right? just how quickly Gonzaga can change that on the floor and here another fast break opportunity. Great save by Perkins. 20 on the shot clock, a lot of time. And a timeout called Gonzaga. They're on a 23 to 2 run right now. 65 We'll take a time out. 15 17 to play in Spokane. Those coaches are going to tell you things you're going to do the rest of your life, right? Here's the big one. You got to love yourself. And that was the great Garth Brooks just a couple of weeks ago. Played a, a series of concerts in Spokane and came over here to Gonzaga for a camp. 
Coach Steele were part of it, a lot of the Zach players as well. Kind of an inspirational camp. Uh, the Garth looks on, I think, wherever he goes tours across the country. Well, to be here, he does a lot more than just sing great country western songs. Man, I went opening night. It was the best concert I have ever been to. It was awesome. Good. Yes. I'm a goat. Best concert for me was Bruce Springsteen. What a hook. From John to the three on the shot clock drops. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, great concert. Great concert. Zach Norvell Jr. Zach big check number three. Two three out. Jakob Larson and now Norvell following Williams out of the game. Replaced by Jeremy Jones. Jeremy Jones has given him some good minutes during this season. Not really much of a score, but he's been opportunistic on the break. Yeah, I think opportunistic is a great word. He's 28-9. Yep. Yeah, you know, he just he knows when to look for his, but more importantly, I think he gives him a lot of versatility defensively. Quick hands from Wade, the lob at the other end. Roy couldn't finish it. And back on the Cardinals. Hey! And Jones went for the block in a spectacular way. But it's cleaned up and the Cardinals get two out of it. But boy, did we see some athletes on the floor in that push. Even Wade, that strip down here, quick hands. Little lob at the other end. It was beautiful, Richard Fox. Great plays on both ends of the floor. They like to see this for UIW to continue to compete down big, but Hearts continue to compete. Uh, the rest of their ball club is just outmatched tonight. Uh, they're going to have plenty of success throughout the year, but tonight just a tough task against GU. Belson to the post. Bianca, left hand jump hook short. Rebound was by Sam Burmeister, and now the Cardinals on offense. Shot clock for Jalen Hart. Hey, working on Hatchie Burrow. And now Johnson from the corner is short for three. And a great offensive rebound, but then the pass goes out of bounds from Devin Wyatt. It'll be on to have a ball. Eight turnovers now this half of the Cardinals. We haven't been seven minutes in. Patchy Burrow pulls his way in. Larson with the tip jam. They went to double block to block on the baseline. Larson simply followed his man. He comes to the front of the rim. It's kind of sneaky, explosive. You don't realize he's going to finish like that until he's up there. Wow. Nice finish for Burmeister. I think that kid's got to earn some more playing time. She talked to the coach. I will. That's an easy <laughs> Yeah, really, Dan, what's up? Wait. Larson. Ruin! And the foul! Well, Jacob Larson showing what you got excited about against Utah State early this season, the passing from the big man. Jesse Wade finds Larson on the low block, and then Larson returns the favor to Rui this time on the baseline cut. Good finish, chance for the three-point play. This was impressive with Jakob as he keeps it up. Most young bigs really struggle with that idea. That concept is really knocks down the, the free throw. Already early in his career, he's got great fundamentals on those catches. And your offensive rebounds are on the low block. Rarely does he put the ball down below his chest. Foul ball there on Jones. Rui Hachimura now with 13 points, but generally all 10 tags with an assist in this game. The ball, just as Richard mentioned in that first half, it's not sticking. The ball is being quick, quick decisions are being made. When you see something, it's an opportunity for a team, teammate to move it on. 72 36, 12 24 to play in Spokane. Today we're going to talk about trucks. Tags are explosive. And we've seen a lot of high flying dunks already this year, but I don't know if we've seen one better than what we're going to see from Sean Jonathan since last year. Get up, big fella. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, he hitches a, ride, hitches a ride here, a little piggyback. I'm not sure how I feel about the defender getting a good shuggle, but hey, it's, uh, it's all <laughs> good fun. Well, good sportsmanship there, too. He yeah. didn't throw him off his shoulders. Yeah. Interesting. Would you ever do that, Dan, on your day? Would you ever dunk and then ride somebody like that? I had one dunk in no, a summer did. league game in my life. That's you did? It. I did. Portland Pro Am. Really? Oh, yeah. Is there video? No. <laughs> So I can still claim it. <laughs> 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 Another 
pretty dangerous guy. That's why you gotta stay on the floor. You know, really. Foul called on Jalen Hart. That's number two on him. Six this half against the Cardinals. So it's 12 17 to play. Jalen Hart has played well for UIW. 14 points on six to 12. And he's an important player for the Cardinals. Last year, second team all conference. Had a poor game against Houston and really responded tonight. Socks inside, can't score. Larson there to contest, and he clears the miss. And a whistle. And a foul away from the ball. I believe on Johnson, Greg, or was it Keith Harvey? It is Johnson. Yeah, yeah, you one down before? You tell me? No, ever. <laughs> wow. You're way too mature to ever be down there. <laughs> And Rui at the free throw line, 13 points in this game. He's 2 of 2 from the line. Five rebounds. I think that's the area that he's seen a ton of growth. And he's really struggled to start the year on the glass. In the last couple of games, he's now with the third leading rebounder on the team coming off the bench. And often it's, because he knocks down the second rebound. When you're playing on the perimeter, particularly that small forward position, there's a lot of opportunity on the offensive glass, but it's more difficult to find that guy when a shot goes up, block him out. I think Rui's figured that out a bit. He's doing an excellent job when he's got that three spot rebound in particular on the offensive end. Johnson. Kind of size advantage. Then Juicy. Burmeister's buck. And then kicks it out of bounds. Zach Hall. That is. Ten turnovers this half now for UIW. Lord Bell Jr. lines up the three and connects. And that's where I think he can be really good for this ball club. He's cutting off with second side pick and rolls. Ball gets moved from one side to the other. Defense is late. He simply stops and pops behind that ball screen. Locks it down. And he needs to be continue to stay aggressive even when he's not knocking down a three point shot. He's really uh, the guy off the bench who can give them 20 points. And he really yeah. did it against Texas, but you know, Zach's got that makeup, a guy who can come in and really give you buckets from particularly on the three-point line. He needs to continue to shoot the ball. Two shots coming for Jalen Hart. 14 points. One assist. No rebounds. Uh, in and out there. His first miss. AP top 10. That's exactly number 15. You surprised the team really jumped up to his box game after what they, uh, they, they did in Portland? I am. I, I think Florida is pretty darn good. I mean, to see them at six and see how they played, their guards are unbelievably good, skilled. Their bigs are athletic. Well, and they, you know, they're missing one of the key players. Yeah, exactly. From where I was sitting on my couch, it looked to me like the Final Four of Cal. The top oh, team it was. Florida, I mean, yeah. That backcourt for Florida, I tell you what. Chris Chioza is as quick a player as I've seen yet this season, getting from one end of the floor to the other, and then he just kind of pauses in the middle of the key and is just at his own pace, making decisions. I know, I know he's other wings that really got it done as well. I know he's small, but boy, he looks to me like a pro. I mean, he just really understands how to play. Did you see that? Or he, just, he reminds me a lot of, of Burmeister knocks down the three from straight away. Ty Lawson from North Carolina a few years back. That's a good call. Yeah. Jones missing. And Hart pushes it for the Cardinals. And went right to the rim. Missed the shot. Jones with the rebound. Ten minutes to play, second half. Larson wanting the ball inside. Silly socks with four fouls. Allows Larson to back in and score. Just if he can concede that. Inside, doesn't want to pick up his fifth. No double. Simple play for Larson. Johnson will shoot it from the corner and connect it. Johnson with eight. Larson, great catch. And finish with the left hand. Norvell disappointed he didn't get the assist, but Larson excited for a rebound and a put back bucket. Uh, that, was, that was my favorite. <laughs> 9-10 to play, 81-43. Gonzaga obviously dominating. 12 of 20 shooting this half, 2 of 4 from behind, 3 6 of 7 from the line. 5 assists, one of those 12 buckets. 
Dr. Manier, each your full team care health system player of the game. Brought to you by Deaconess Hospital, Rockwood Clinic, and Valley Hospital, Bell Park, and Multi Care Health System. Better connected. And Larson giving you the Hatsi Burma. A little bit to bit connection. Great. Really able to finish through the contacts. The thing I like about that play is he wouldn't have made that instinctual cut along the baseline last season, or maybe even early this season in preseason practices. He's starting to understand spacing, how to move on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, I think that obviously the ceiling is very high for Rui really Hachimura. But I want to see him on the defensive end create havoc. He's got that length and that quickness and the ability to just get up on somebody and just yeah, take him out. You know, you saw a lot of those plays last year because he was gambling the time. He often made some plays because he was out of position. I've been really impressed because he, he's been at the right spot on the weak side in particular. More often than not, he's still making some mistakes as a young player, uh, but he's really developed on the, on the defensive end. And when he's at that three spot, you're watching a high major kid guard to the perimeter. That's the kind of talent he has. Well, because he's consistently in the right spots, He's starting to earn Coach Few's trust, which will allow him the ability to play through an occasional mistake. There's Socks, mid-range jumper is good. Uh, Sitting with 10. Gonzaga goes zone that time, and UIW did a good job of pulling Larson out away from the basket. Socks knocking it down. Socks working hard inside to try to deny Larson the ball. Orville Jr. scores it. He's crafty going to the rim. We keep talking about his three-point shooting, as he should, you know, but he's already shown in his career and as a high school player. But he's got kind of that old man YMCA take to his yeah. game where he can find a way to get to the rim. He's not all that explosive, but still finds a way to finish over some length. And a foul called on Jeremy Jones, number 22. Did they give that to Larson? I believe it was right. Jeremy Jones. Jones yeah. It was Jones, right? Well, Jeremy wasn't moving. That's his fifth. Jeremy just fouled out of the game. So you only get six yeah. five. or five there. Do you think they'll ever move into six? I think they should. I mean, honestly, in that Florida game, to see those players, the best players on the floor, fall out of the game, wasn't that a shame? Yeah, I think there's a lot of them. What's wrong with one more foul? Especially when you go to overtime. Shouldn't you get an extra foul for the overtime? I do like that idea. You extend the game into extra minutes, get an extra foul. That would be a nice addition to the rules. But really, Hachimura with the knockdown three. Okay. It's possible that uh, they were awfully quick on that fifth foul for Jones. He may only have four. So I don't think he's fouled out. The official stat machine here has it at four. But now another foul coming against you. And this one's against Jakob Larson. Rui Hachimura. He's got it all, ladies and gentlemen. And Gonzaga's up here. TX and Lee has numeric. And welcome back to Spokane, and now something that you may never ever see again in your entire lifetime. Well, Halftime shots. This was the first contestant. I, now, I see one. The first and three. The second one hit the front of the rim dead center. And then number three just did this. Boom. Bang. Two wow. out of three. But my question is, is did the guy who shot first get all the pop money? No, no, no. no, 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 no. doesn't no. get anything. They both got the bucks. No, they both got the bucks. And, and the guy in the middle hit the front of the rim dead, dead center. Almost a trifecta. Wow. What is that, what's that called in horse racing? Parlay? Trifecta? I don't know. Neither better right gamble. So, yeah. There, there's a term for what it. What do I look like, a jockey? <laughs> You're definitely not that. <laughs> well, you look to me like I should know. I don't know what... <laughs> or also known as a good bet. A daily double, isn't that the wheel of fortune? So, Jack Peach at the top of the team is Jesse Wade. First of all, screen from uh, Yaka Larson. Oh, here's Wade. <laughs> Jack Peach on the floor, number two with the ball right now for G.U. As we get close to seven minutes. Four on the shot clock. Wade, his first look at it from deep is off. Larson with the rebound, but he's called for the foul and he doesn't agree. So Yaka picks up number three. That's your bird checks out of the game. So 
Hawks at the line with 11 points. Making 12, three players in double figures for UIW. Hart, Sox, and Johnson. Corkell Jr. Drives hard and scores. That's where he's so good that big body of the day. He's just so shifty. He, Richard hit it on the head. He's not the most explosive of athletes, but what he does is a really good job of attacking angles and using his shoulders and his hips to create advantage. And he's got such a soft touch. He's going to average 40 in the men's league, I'm telling you. That game translates to like 45. Opposite the screen, Jones. The beach, under 10 on the shot clock. Jones drives, went for the jam, falls hard, and the foul pulled. And the ball knocked loose from the first. How about this? Jones. You uh, don't see that all that often, Jeremy, but you like to see him go to the rim with that kind of intention. So knocks down the first free throw. Sean Johnson picking up his fourth personal. The 40 point lead for GU. You notice I waited until the math got really easy to say. Hey, we get a good sign from us. We're learning. I can just tell you, Dan, that I went to a lot of games and didn't go to class. But that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, you weren't the student experience kind of guy? Well, I was. It affected the math skills, but I was here. You're not here, but there. <laughs> Jack Peach on the floor for GU. Still on the floor. Players going at it with 5.39 to play. That's a lot of sad ball. A lot of contact. I thought Sox got fouled there from behind. There's no dog came in to get the ball. A great hustle from both groups. Here you see from behind, Norvell comes in late. That's a foul. But GU gets the break and the ball. Reputation as a big time shooter hasn't had the opportunities yet to show it this season. Burmeister with Jones flying out at him. Buries the three. Great composure over there out of number 15. You know what I love about this act team this year? It seems like there's there are very few valleys. It just seems like the effort and the level of play is so steady from opening tip the, to the end of the game this year. Obviously, they against Texas, they had, things fell off there. There's one example, but it was also the third game of that. Yeah. But I just love the, the consistent effort that this team puts out. Yeah, it's hard knocks down a little jump shot. I think you're spot on. The efforts there, this is a really, really unselfish group. Uh, really no egos to speak of. And what, you know, they're going to have peaks and valleys with respect to you know, making shots and that sort of thing. But what you like is they... They play the same way every night. They move the ball, they're unselfish, and defensively they've been consistent throughout the year. Boy, after that catch by Larson, he's got to be rewarded with a whistle down there, I think. His shot hit at the other end. 93-57. Larson sets the screen. Great catch again. Got the defender in the air for the left hand flush. I love the fact that Larson wants to dunk everything inside. You know, so many bigs are looking to lay it up. Reminds me of you. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Uh, come on. It's been nice to be all night. Uh, I think that is a nice statement. Here's Lord Bell in transition. And a chance for three. We talked about it a few times again. Creating the contact. Shoulder into the chest with the finish. But we'll take another look. Jacob Larson with the left hand hammer. But as we go to break, Zach Norvell, I will take two when we come back. I'll make it a three point play. Thanks, that's it. Washington, it's time now to announce tonight's player of the game, presented by A to Z Red. Josh Perkins, a perfect evening for the Redshirt Junior. 16 points on six of six field goals. Perfect for the ball to the three point line. No job is too big or too small, but big. Convenient locations, and we run everything. Let A to Z Red be your most valuable player. Thank you, Richard. There's Josh. Hit the breather, Zach's up. About 41. Christian Peavy, right at Joe. 
missed it. Going down with the rebound. Sachs looked to run again. It's going to be some research parlay. It's not uh, a good off read. Uh, the trifecta and the superfecta, I believe. What is parlay? It's what the trifecta by Jones final call. Turn an initial stake or take winnings from a previous bet into uh, another bet. Hoping to increase the amount of money that you've won. You yes. haven't heard the term in sports like you parlay turnovers into points. You know, I, what was this background when we were talking about it about 15 minutes ago? <laughs> I got lost in all the other minutia. <laughs> Dan talking about the seats empty. Yeah. Just yelling at Caleb. I'm really upset. Hey, Caleb, when the Caleb Club brings it, oh, dude, I've always said this is the house that Dan built. This is the best right? the house that Dan built. Who cares about this? Yeah. You should. I'm blessed to be able to call games across the West Coast. And this is the best atmosphere by far, bar none. But when the students bring it, as they do on the biggest of games, it's not even close. And it's over. Wade now looking to run two. And free throw is coming for Alex Martin, a redshirt sophomore on Overland Park, Kansas. We're not in Kansas anymore, Alex. We're at the free throw line at the McCarthy Athletic Center. And first one drops. Well, big game on Friday, fellas. Creighton coming to the kennel. Having a good start to the year, five and one on the season. Marcus Foster, the transfer from Kansas State, has been tremendous for Creighton the last year plus. Having been about 18 a game, Dan, she was going to have her hands full in the backcourt. Good backcourt, extremely tough and versatile frontcourt as well. They're used to playing physical because of the Big East style. And the foul called there is Jordan Kite, number 23. We'll go back to the free throw line here for UIW and Corey Kisper. Back on the bench for two, it is uh, noticeable that his left shoe is off. So obviously he's not returning in this game. Well, we haven't gotten an update as to what the, the issue is. That's the ball, but the guy, a couple of days here to get him right. They're going to need a solid effort from Corey uh, to win the game on Friday. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, they're creating a true top 25 team. Yes, they travel as well. That's a, a true ball club. It's an upperclassman. There's Martin. The three ball is short. Oh, fell. The offensive rebound. Jack Beach driving to the rim. And out of bounds. No foul. That's sack of ball. Shoot the three, young man. I think the rest are going to call him many fouls to finish this game. The young player getting a chance to get out there. You also got to understand that. Jones. Did a great job to get the defender in the air and draw that foul. Foul on August Tunay, number 12. Jones with five points in this game, five rebounds and assists as well. Remember, depth was a concern for this team coming into the season. That's all, that's all we can talk about. We're not worried anymore, are we? No. But look, it, there were so many unknowns. You know, Rudy was the fifth most minutes back at 128, and then Jones follows him up with about 86, 88 minutes played last year. So you knew you had some talent, but not a lot of proven commodities returning. But Corey Kisberg has been much good. Has been, has been, much hype was surrounding him coming to, to G. You really didn't know he played a senior year in high school. Look at Rui, all the talent in the world, couldn't put it together last year, break the rotation. Jones, just struggled with injuries. Alex Martin went up for that offense for that rebound a moment ago and came down and twisted, I believe, that left ankle. And he's being helped off right now. It was obvious when he did that. Norvell, Jones, Larson, Beach, and Reed on the floor. Under a minute to play now. Norvell, Wade battling, goes out of bounds, comes out the ball. 44.6 seconds to play. There's Jones. 
Everybody whistle. He's uh, foul number 13 against UIW this time. And Jeremy goes to the line, 3 of 5, to this point. 4 of 6. That big guy has left the broadcast booth. It's had enough of us, apparently. Moving into position, I'm assuming, for an interview. Oh, okay, I thought he was fed up. There's Herbie. Step back jumper is good. That's a three. Herbie with eight. Keaton out of Cedar Park, Texas. Reaching to six, seven hundred ninety pound freshman. Got a nice stretch here. Out of the first and second half, rather. Each misses the three. Cut from the corner is good. And Richard, no starter for Gio has played more than 21 minutes, which is what you would have wanted coming into tonight. A lot of heavy minutes for the top of your rotation in Portland. We presume they're going to get a lot of minutes here on Friday and next Tuesday. It's a good opportunity to get some rest. 106-68 the final. Gonzaga now 6-1 on this young season. But the next two games... Actually, there's 103 68 the final. They had the wrong score up there. So, 103 68 the final. The virtue of these next two games are going to tell a lot about national rankings through the first half. These are huge games coming with Craig and Villanova. They really are. You win them both and they're in the top 10. That's for the rest of the year. Absolutely. And just another tremendous opportunity for GU. Had a great opportunity in Portland, not only to get a good sense of where you are and where you need to improve, but also to build that resume. We're going to take a timeout. We will have an interview with the SAG when we come back. 103-68, the finals. Stay right there. I think we go to one great point guard who's about to interview another one, Dan Dickow, Josh Perkins. Take it away, Dan. Hey, I appreciate it, fellas. We're here with Josh Perkins, obviously the player of the game tonight. Josh, 103-68 to 68 win. Can you miss right now leading, coming back from the PK-80 to tonight? I mean, how does it feel? I mean, it feels unreal. And, uh... To answer your question, I hope not. You know, uh, as long as it keeps going good and goes in, I'm, I'm happy with it. You guys had an unbelievable effort down in Portland at the PK-80. One game against Florida didn't quite go your way. You guys had a great job bouncing back against Texas. It would have been easy to overlook tonight's opponent, UIW, and kind of have a complacent approach. What was Coach Q's message? I kind of what she said. Uh, let's stay at a high point and not, not let it go down. Let's not uh, look over his team. Let's come and execute this kind of report. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a game for us. So we got to work on some things, and we took our opportunity and got better today. So I'm glad with the performance we had. It's going to be a much different atmosphere, a much different uh, opponent on Friday. Creighton comes in here uh, incredibly tested. They're very better in backcourt. What do you guys need to do to come out on Friday with the same energy, with the same execution, and come out on top of the victory? I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing. You know, executing, uh, moving the ball, I mean, and getting stops. You know, uh, defense end, you need to pick up on defense end, they get tough for them. Uh, like I said, take care of the ball and play for each other and play with each other. I think we should be in good hands. Well, Josh, you started off the season incredibly well. Keep it going. Good luck on Friday night. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Josh. And, and I think, Richard, it was very clear when the season started that everybody was saying this team's going to go as far as Josh Perkins goes in. He's off to a tremendous start. Well, yeah, what, 40, last 40, three point, three pointers attempted 65% of the right. You're not going to find a, a point guard shooting better in the country right now. He's really feeling well and feeling it on the offensive end. And not only that, but he's doing a decent job of getting his teammates involved, protecting the ball. But you have to think about there's really nobody to back him up to handle those ball handling, ball handling duties. So he's got to deal with all that pressure on top of searching out his offense. I think he's doing a fabulous job. And then also, defensively, he's always competing. Yeah, and kudos to Josh. Really worked on his conditioning in that offseason. Knowing that the ball was going to be in his hands a lot, right. he's going to have to play 36 minutes a game, maybe more. And uh, he's living up to his billing. Top 50 player when he came here, right. the highest recruit at the time that Gonzaga had ever signed. So kudos to him. Well, people forget as a high school junior, he averaged something somewhere around 25 points a game in a really competitive league in Colorado. And he went, goes to the prep school and kind of, in an odd way, changed his game and really focused on facilitating it. And he's had a difficult a career so far. You know, he expected to back up Kevin Pangos, breaks the jaw, now he's out of here. Doesn't really get that, that mentorship, that tutelage from Kevin Pangos or Gary Bell. And then all of a sudden, Nigel comes in and he's been used to playing the point guard. He's got to almost learn a whole different position. I think he's kind of settled in now to that point guard spot for this year and next. And obviously a player that's just going to become more and more important to Gonzaga as this, senior, as this season continues on is Rui Hachimura. As we welcome Dan Dickow back in, and Dan, he's really coming into his own these last three or four games. A bright spot for Gonzaga. Spark off the bench now, two games in a row. Career high 20 against Texas, and another very, very effective game with 18 points this evening. But the thing I like about him is he's playing more instinctual this year than he ever did last season. It's been very good to see. 
Craig, Craig's going to come in here and really test Gonzaga because they travel well, they're a veteran team, and they know how to win. They play a lot of tough contested games in their conference. What has Gonzaga got to do to win? Well, I think Josh Perkins hit it right on the head. Be themselves. They've shown now through the early part of the season that if they are themselves, they're a darn good basketball team. And it starts on the defensive end, and then it gets out and just sharing the ball, moving the ball, and executing offensively. I think if they do that, I think they're going to be fine. Yes, if they're going to be tested physically, that they haven't been tested at home yet, but they saw that at the PK-80. So I think that tournament was a perfect precursor to get them ready for this game as well as Villanova. And Richard, they go and play Villanova. A lot of people are talking about that team in the Final Four. They're going to be close to their hometown, right? I mean, it's, right. Going, to, it's going to be a different atmosphere for, for Villanova than Gonzaga. That would be as good a win as we've seen in a long time for Junior to go there and win. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, essentially a road game and to be the top 10 team of Villanova is a handful. Think about it. Tremendous guard play. And they, oddly enough, they play kind of Junior rather than playing. Kind of a similar style of Villanova, really moving the ball on the perimeter, up and down. They've got good length inside. They've got great size. It's going to be a game with a lot of great athletes on the floor. Can't wait for either one of them. This week is going to be so interesting in Sackville. Win or lose, the season continues. The progress grows. Gonzaga with another win, 103-68 against UIW. For Dan Dickel, Richard Fox, the rest of our crew, I'm Greg Heister. Good night from the McCarthy Athletic Center. The Sacks, now 6-1. My favorite show moment was when...